Hey guys, it's Miss NG here, and I wanted to do a follow-up on a video Mr. Naked Gardener did just a few weeks ago. I say a few, but about four weeks ago, about a worm casting tea that we did to try to revitalize our garden because we had a little bit of an issue right after we transplanted all of our starts a little bit of a cold front came through and it affected the vitality of our starts and quite a few were stunted so in this video i'm going to take you through a little bit of a tour a follow-up and it was after two applications um, in that video he showed his first application and two weeks later i did another one and it is now a week since I did that and I want to kind of like take you through and show you how it actually has benefited our garden. Our strawberries have actually been awesome uh, even from the time that we did the worm tea. The cucumbers however has been the challenge for us. I'm a little dismayed. I was expecting those to be a little bit nicer by now and I did do a lot of direct sewing just to kind of like make up for some of the ones that just look like they were not going to recover. Um, I'm really a big fan of the Persian pickling cucumbers. I really love those for pickling. I like to harvest them when they're pretty small uh, because I like them crunchy. And uh, now that I have a recipe that I, I love, um, I like to use that. So I'm still kind of like in the, the prayer section of hoping that the cucumbers do rebound like they should. June is usually kind of like the telltale sign for me. Even last year, I didn't really have cucumber harvests until June. So we'll see this year. Um, I, I Honestly, I'm still on the fence just praying. These are Punta Conta cucumbers and I had to direct sow some of them because they died. Um, they didn't stand up well to the cold front when it came through and so it looks like some are coming through so I might have a good amount. This is going to be an experiment one for me. It's supposed to be a really good sweet slicer. So I wanted to experiment. I have it on this trellis on both sides, co-plant it with the dill. Over here we have the Market More slicers. So both of these are slicers. I just wanted to compare the two to see what slicers we like. We cannot go through fresh slicers fast enough but I've heard a lot of great things about the Punta Canta. It's supposed to be the best sweet one. And then these are really good, reliable, supermarket quality slicers, the Market More 76. So we'll see. This will be an experiment for me this year. Sage the cat, I think he hangs out here at night. He's a little comfortable right now during the garden tour. You got anything to say, sir? Mm-hmm. Get to going then. You need a job. At least catch a mouse. This is my loofah bed. The loofahs were also affected by the cold that came through. So I did direct sow, and those are coming up. There was three over here. One did not come up, um, and it looks like all three, it looks like all three of those are coming up, but I did dahlias, um, a particular one by Baker's Creek, Always Wins is what it was called. And I put some zinnias here and some sunflowers in the corners. And this bed that has the 
loofahs and the dahlia winds and the sunflowers is just a mirror image of what I have in this bed over here. It's the same thing. Um, I might have put a different sunflower actually. I wish, wait, I did put, uh, this is the teddy bear. Now the tomatoes, I'm starting to see tomatoes happen and it did not look like that was even going to be something that we were going to have. So it's really nice to see a lot of the tomatoes starting to have some fruits. I am monitoring those and I am very prayerful that we actually have some fruits before it gets too hot. Why are there so many flies? I'm noticing that there is a ton of flies on the artichokes. This is our first successful year with artichokes, so I'm still learning. If you can comment down below and tell me what the deal with that is, that would be great. Our squash is looking fantastic. We have not had great success with squash. Um, this is your standard yellow neck squash. So far it's great. I have seen what looks like some squash bug eggs, so we'll see. And speaking of squash, we usually always grow the Zucchino Tromboncino because that is the only squash that we've had luck with the squash bugs. It's just uh, been very repellent to it. I am not growing it this year. I am growing, I guess it's cousin. It's just the Trombancino. And I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but we are having some fruits on the Trombancino squash. So I'm looking forward to just experimenting and comparing it to what I know the Zucchino Trombancino is. Uh, but it, it, I mean, it's supposed to be relatively close in the family. The other squash that we are successfully growing right now, it looks like we're starting just now to have some fruit, is the butternut squash. I love butternut squash and I particularly love it when I can grow it for my own garden. I really like to supplement it as a potato um, and to make soups from it. It is just really a delicious squash. And I've had a lot of success with that in our garden. We're having a lot of beautiful salad come up and I'm probably gonna be sharing that with some of my rabbit bunny mamas um, here soon. And I make Sid a lot of sandwiches during the week for work. So it'll be nice having that to pick from. I just up potted all this roselle. Um, we have been really behind in planting and we have plans to let me bring you over here we have plans to plant that as kind of like a natural wall and I actually make a lot of stuff with Roselle so right now I'm really just trying to preserve it keep it healthy so that we can transplant it when we're truly ready to do that and so hopefully hopefully that works out last year i had two really successful roselle plants and i made a lot of stuff and i i um canned a lot of it i made syrups i made teas and i really just want to have that always always on our property this comfrey is out of control <laughs> um, it's beautiful we're gonna enjoy it probably going to be an experiment this year. We've known for a few weeks that we need to up pot, uh, transplant some of it. And we're, we're just behind, man. Um, we have been busy and it's really, Sid travels a lot um, and just the schedule is limited and time is flying by. And we do have an ongoing project of a medicinal tea garden and a lot of this is going to go there a lot of our comfrey is going to go there and a lot of stuff that i just don't have to replant every year is going to go into that garden all of this calendula is basically 
volunteer plants that came out of a pot I had here last year and so we're just gonna let them do what they do uh, that is gonna be another plant that we have in our medicinal tea garden because I want to have a concentrated area of something that I want to save and dry and utilize with oils for our soaps and some lotions now this right here is our purple passion asparagus and I co-planted in there because I only had like two or three hoppy black sunflowers so I kind of like put them on the outskirts because it's just a seasonal thing and this is going to be a perennial bed and it's just an experiment for me to kind of see if I can get away with that um, but I just learned that I can pick those oh my god it's so good it's so good raw and tender and that's going to be another thing mr naked gardener and i kind of like fight about <laughs> probably i try to be fair and save snacks asparagus and strawberries but i have to oh my god have a motivating factor and have a snack you might remember from a recent video that Mr. Naked Gardener did and putting together these no tool beds. We put some strawberries in this first bed. Uh, he looked at me a little bit crazy for wanting to have the large 5x10 bed, but I decided to do a lot of different watermelon there. I'll explain. And then in the last bed, we have some more asparagus. So this is really the big four week update after two applications of the worm tea that we recently did to revive our garden. And if you wanna know more about that, I'll put that video off to the side and in the show notes below. And until then, thanks for hanging out with me.